Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sam Marshall Law Show, where we delve into the stories of inspiring individuals from all walks of life. I'm your host, Sam Marshall Law, and today we have a very special guest. She's not just special because of her incredible journey and the work she does, but also because she's family. Yes, today I have the privilege of interviewing my own sister, Sakina. Born and raised in England, we moved to New Jersey in 1990 where we grew up together. I've seen her work tirelessly, earning degree after degree, all while raising a beautiful family with three sons and 11 husbands. After our father passed away, she made a brave move to North Carolina where she started her own business, Mind You Wellness. Sakina is a MSN, P-M-H-N-P, hyphen B-C. For those who might not know, MSN stands for Master of Science in Nursing, and PMHNP hyphen BC stands for Psychiatric Mental Health Nurse Practitioner Board Certified. This means she's an advanced practice registered nurse who specializes in psychiatric mental health care. She's not a psychiatrist, but she provides mental health care services, assessing, diagnosing, and treating clients' mental health needs. At Mind You Wellness, she helps individuals aged 13 to 85 explore how and why their mental health is impacting their lives. She uses a holistic approach, incorporating therapy, supplements, and medications to relieve distressing symptoms. Her mission is to transform her clients' days into adventures, helping them meet their personal goals. Today, we're going to dive deep into her journey, her work, and her insights on mental health. We'll discuss the stigma associated with mental health, the link between poor mental health and physical health, and the concept of failure to launch. We'll also explore the impact of unmanaged mental health on individuals and families over generations. So get ready for an insightful, inspiring, and heart-touching conversation. Let's welcome Sakina to the show. Welcome, Sakina. What's good? Hello, 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 everyone. What's good? What's going on? Thank, Thank you for coming through. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let's get dive right into the questions. Let me uh, turn off the the beat though. Huh. Sakina, mind you, right. wellness. Can you share your perspective on the stigma associated with mental health and why it's important to address it at all? Well, <laughs> to put it very very sh- shortly, nobody wants to be crazy. But literally everybody is crazy, if if that's the word we're going to use. And the, the, the stigma is that nobody wants to be crazy, right? Nobody wants to have a diagnosis. No, nobody wants to have a name for the things that they experience, think, or their behaviors. And that's 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 what the stigma is all about. And the reason why it's a problem is because if you don't name something you can't address it if you don't name it and acknowledge it. So you don't, you know, naming is part of acknowledging it. So basically stigma makes it so where people do not acknowledge the things that are actually happening every single day. And they lead to things like failure to launch many health issues, um, you know, friendships falling out, businesses crumbling, <laughs> all of the collapse of society. <laughs> it's oh. All about oh, I see what you're saying. That, that makes a lot of sense because um, I'm sure like I've had a lot of problems during my life that I didn't have names for and I didn't even realize they were stigmas. And uh, probably a lot of people have these issues, just like you said, making right. businesses collapse, this, that, and the third. Um, All kinds of things. How do you work towards de-stigmatizing mental health in your practice and in, and in your personal life? So... So in my practice, uh, the first thing I do is make myself available, right? So that's why I have my own business because, of course, I can work for other people, and I do, um, for you know, for different reasons. But um, so making myself available where I can have my own brand, where I can do what I want to do, uh, when I can be in control of making the decisions, then I can be very, very honest with the people that I I interact with and get to meet. And so I start to, you know, explain to them and highlight patterns in their life as they tell me their story and what's happening in their life. Right. And so I call out what things are and I tell them the name for it. 
Hmm. So, do they ex- you know accept it? I was gonna say. I was just gonna say. For the most part, because um, I'm not doing this, in the, as you said, in my personal life as well, I'm not doing this so much in my personal life anymore, right? So most of the time they accept it because they came looking for, for these answers, okay? Um, and that's why it's important as well for me to to have a practice and to learn all these things so that I can sh- share my uh, knowledge. Right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Is, is there a link between like poor mental health and poor physical health, you would say? And- 100%. And, and I wish people understood this because people, you know, most people all around the world, they they care about their physical health, whether it's because they're um, um, what's vain, vain or or because uh, maybe they see they can see their physical health as giving them mm, autonomy and uh, you know authority over what they do, right? Right. But they can't see their mental health as doing that. Huh. Oh, I forgot the question. What did you ask me? No. It, is there really a link between their mental health and their um, poor physical health? Yes. So, so, okay. So their physical health, they care about that. Right. But they, so they'll treat it. Right. If they, if they, I mean, if people get overweight, they want a magic pill or anything, they'll do anything. They'll starve themselves. They'll do anything to get right. But they, but they won't acknowledge the fact that if they weren't depressed, they would just get up and exercise. Right. I mean, so your mental health can stop you from doing many, 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 many things. Like if you, if you're depressed and you stop going outside, then you don't get any sunlight. Then you, you know, you don't get your vitamin D synthesized properly, and then, you know, you just get depressed. And it's a phys- it's a physical thing. Now you're too tired to do to do exercise, and so now, yeah, your endorphins are not releasing the way that they should, which is a chemical that's going to go to your brain. You see? Yeah. Yeah. It just I could go on and on and on and on and on. There's serotonin in your brain and there's serotonin in your gut, like your GI tract, right? So if you're if you're anxious, you, you wanna you wanna go to the bathroom, you wanna poop because it's all connected. So your mental health you ever heard of a nervous stomach? You know, people that get you get nervous, you wanna go to the bathroom, right? Yeah, yeah, I know some people yeah, directly does. living in this house. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> what'd you say no i know some people living in this house like me right exactly so i've had so, I'm saying, like, so you the way how p- people refuse to acknowledge it if they would acknowledge it i believe they would treat their mental health like people go decades and whole lifetimes not treating their mental health because they don't want to be associated with the stigma of having being crazy right how how do you like educate your clients to like improve that as for like I what, what can them, they do? I ask them what's the prize for for not treating it what are they getting out of it uh-huh. are they comfortable living their life um the way that they're living it and if they are i mean sometimes me and them you know we part ways because you know we don't there's no need to talk every every week or every month about you wanted to do the same thing right are, are there any like specific case studies from your practice where you help someone from like overcome failure to launch or what you're talking about? Yeah. So, and failure to launch is like, um, failure to launch is when somebody at some point in their life, they don't, they don't meet a milestone. Right. And so then that keeps on going. Right. So that could be anything from, they don't graduate high school, anything like that. And so when I, I have, I have met people because like I said, they come to me sometimes and they say, I've gotten this far in my life and I can't push it forward what to do. Right. And so I get to hear their whole life story and see there's one story um, that sticks out a lot because it was recent. It was this guy, he's 24 years old and, um, and he has a business and he was a one man show with the business. And um, he, he came to me because he said that he couldn't, like manage all of the aspects of the business. You know, he feels like he could do so much more and everything like that. And when he was younger, you know, um, he, he, nobody was there raising him really. So that he didn't get to go to any doctors or anything to see um, if he had anything or whatever. So anyway, he's got ADHD. I treated him and now his business is 
like he he has a warehouse he has several employees he's got several several clients um he's got so much business that he he can't keep up with it even with his employees and that's because he's able to organize and do the things that he couldn't do because he wasn't um treating his adhd that's crazy does he to me it is is he able to give you discounts for whatever he does does he give you? The um, I haven't needed his services, but he probably would. <laughs> I, don't I don't know if he really would. Sometimes, you know, it's not that kind of relationship. It's funny. And sometimes it is. I know as an average person, like looking in on the outside, looking in this, how, how I would think like every person that is coming to me for help, like, how can you help me? <laughs> yeah, some, I know, right? It's, it's a mess. That's why I kind of make sure I get paid for it if I'm being 100% honest, because I used to do this with friends and family before, and I can get left with nothing. It takes a lot. You have to pour a lot into people to to see what what's going wrong. Not what's wrong with them, what's going wrong. Right. Our mental health a lot of the time is not what's wrong with us. It's about how what's going wrong is impacting us. And and that could be so many things. The, the you know, that could be so many things. If you're <laughs> mental health is so many things. Because grief is a part of mental health, right? Right. Suppose right. some people are raised without parents. Right? right. Or raised without one or the other parents. And they're just, they'll say that they don't have any trauma, but many, many decisions that they make in their life is, is informed by the, the, by the absence of a certain kind of love. Right. So I guess so. I was going to kind of ask a question about that. Like how does unmanaged health impact families over generations? It's the worst, like, because it just depends what you're talking about. And that's why people should get help, because suppose you were raised by, you know, an alcoholic, right? right? You might not be an alcoholic, but, you you know, you, you would have seen some things that other people didn't see. You might have been frightened a lot of your childhood. You, you might have been put in danger by someone who was supposed to protect you, things like that. So you grow up and you have... Um, you don't have good boundaries. Right. And then, and then it goes into the next generation because you might repeat some of the same behaviors or you might, you know, you might do the complete opposite. You might be overprotective, which could still lead to some problems. So these are all mental health issues, anxiety, you know, just substance abuse, neglect is going to lead to some PTSD People don't know they have. Right. I understand that. Um, I, I would say that probably happened in, uh, probably happens in every family. Uh, probably happened in ours exactly. too. <laughs> exactly. So that, that's, that's what I'm saying about mental health. It's not, it's not mental health and illness is not going anywhere. It's, 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 it is as prevalent as a common cold. Right. So right. people walking around saying, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. It's really a mute point. It's not about that. You know, are you stressed out to the point where it's making you not want to work and you're 27, which is crazy. Like, yeah. You shouldn't be wanting to go on disability because of your, ang you know, your anxiety. So y you can treat it. How would you approach treatment for families dealing with generational mental issues, mental health issues? Um, you know, you have to involve the whole, you have to involve the whole family. You can, if you can, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you can't, you can't treat the whole family. You just have to be there for the person who wants to understand how the family's um, habits are impacting their life. I guess that's a big part, actually wanting to know and wanting to change and wanting to improve. If you don't want that, I suppose it's never going to happen. Right. If you don't want it, it's, that's not your, it's not for you. Um, did your move from like England then to New Jersey, then to North Carolina influence your understanding of mental health at all? Or did that just not have anything to do with anything? It definitely did. And the reason why is because I, I've seen a lot of different cultures and an understanding um, of how people do things and the, the label, the labels are important because labels are only specific to a certain culture. 
Mm -hmm. So, so just understand most labels anyway. So it helped me to not attach too much to any, to any label. It helped me to be open-minded. Right. So I can, I can, I can follow the rules of my education and still be more open-minded and do more comprehensive care because I know that it's deeper than just what I learned in school. Right. Right. I see what you're saying. So Mm -hmm. is that sort of the same way? Like how would say, how would your multicultural background inform your approach to mental health treatment? Definitely. And the the multicultural is is interesting because yes, uh, multicultural makes it sound like everybody's different, but the most thing that having multi cultures has taught me is that there's very much similarities, mm-hmm. you know, so in family dynamics and things like that. Right. Business. How, um, how has your work in mental health affected your perspective on parenting? It's, 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 it's it has impacted it a lot because I, understand way more now than I did when I first became a parent. And because I have had to be unbiased, uh, it, it, it has, so as a parent or not, not as a parent, but as someone who is involved. So as a parent, you are involved, right? It's hard to be unbiased, but it, my job helps train me to be unbiased i have to see all sides of the story so it helps me in parenting because um parenting is not about being uh the same not not about treating everybody the same it's about understanding each person and what what's contributing to what they have going on and uh supporting them i think in any way that you can and it's helped me to do that you know more right right hmm do you have any like what what would your piece of advice be to a young mother like if you had one piece of advice to a young mother wow to like as far to connecting it to mental health to trying to like make sure she has the best possible mental health during her journeys because i know they you know have to go through a lot and they're mentally i'm not even talking about emotionally like what you have to do mentally to get from point a to point b to point z a young mother, if you could like put yourself right. in that position, like what? right, right, right. I'm thinking of myself as a young, really tough. Um, and not, I wasn't getting into fights or anything like that, but I was really mentally strong, and I still feel like I got to the point where, you know, I, I had some really low times as well. So, so what I would tell a young mother, because what I didn't do, what I would have done differently, is that I would have um. I would have definitely taken it a bit easier on my on myself, like giving myself some grace. So for a young mother, because I don't know who this young mother is, you know what I'm saying? But but for if she, if she was like me, I would have say, uh, focus more on yourself. Um, do more for yourself. Yeah. And I did that. But I, I, I should have done it earlier. So as far as mental health, I would say care for yourself in the way that your motherly instinct is, 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 is allowing you to care for other people. You better be doing that for yourself first All right. before you become a mama. <laughs> so you, you saying that makes me now think, how do you now balance your personal responsibilities with being a mother and a wife? Absolutely. Okay. I, I don't take the short end of the stick. Okay. Mm. I'm a mother and we are a family and we're a team. And we, we all have, we all have feelings. So I, I balance it as far as taking care of myself. I don't, I have boundaries, you know, maybe that I didn't have when my kids were younger, Mm. you know? So I, I take care of them and I do things for them and everything like that. But, um, so maybe I would say no to my children more, um, you know, just have some boundaries. Parenting is, is really, really hard. Mm -hmm. Within parenting, you still found time and inspiration and motivation. What inspired you to start your own business? Mind you wellness. I was going to say, so, so I guess to piggyback on that last question, how do I, 
take time for myself. If I say no to other people, right, mm -hmm. then I can do things for myself, right? Like, and that might be, I might not be cooking dinner because I'm going to school, mm -hmm. right? So that's how I was able to even have my own business. Other, a lot of other mothers wouldn't because they would, they would have said they're not going to school. They don't have time. They have to take care of their children. I took care of my children, mm -hmm. you know, they're right here and I can even take care of them better now. Right. And they've, they've seen more, more of their mother than they would have seen if I didn't do these things. And I'm still here and they're still right here. So the balance for me was not losing myself. I, I have a voice and there's things that I want to do. Nobody else in here in my family is a mental health provider. So if I didn't do this, then that part wouldn't be getting done. Right. So I guess that was the balance for me, not losing myself. I just know a lot, a lot of other mothers that didn't do anything for themselves or for their own voice because they were being a mother. And how did that work out for them? A lot of them are depressed and won't admit it. Hmm. What does that look like? Oh, when someone's depressed and won't admit it? Yeah. A lot of times they will be... They, they, they move slower, right? So they do less, right? So less interactive with the world in general. So, you know, you can be an introvert and not deal with a lot of people, but if you're not dealing with a lot of people and you're not doing a lot of things, um, so you're not being artistic, you're not expressing yourself, you're not, you're not, re you're not reading anything, you know, you're just not doing anything. That's a form of depression. So some people will go to work and go home and go to sleep and they will say they're not, depressed because they they go to work and they and they pay their bills but like they're not they're not enjoying the arts right or life in general and also they get irritated quickly um they think people are they have a lot of negative thoughts a lot of thoughts in general and a lot of them are negative right uh -huh. if if they're depressed and they don't know it right so so their perception of things is 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 negative that's that's a way you can know somebody's depressed. So tired, mm -hmm. don't want to do anything, withdrawn, can't create or think of anything, like no no new ideas or anything like that. Um, so those are some behaviors, and then and then of course if you if you think about those behaviors, the the person that that behaves like that, okay, is going to look probably less kept than some others right because they're not going out as much and so they're not like keeping their self up mm -hmm. their hair might not be done maybe they don't maybe their toenails are dirty or something like that i don't know i mean that was real detailed yeah. i just i have <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just i look out for those <laughs> dirty toenails no i'm joking I, I know what you're talking about Mm -hmm. They might be overweight, you know, because they're not eating the right things. OK, if you if you feel good, you, it goes. It's just a circle all the time. If you feel good, you're going to put good things into your body, because if you put something into your body that's unhealthy, it's going to make you feel terrible. Right. Unless you're used to eating like that and you don't know what feeling terrible feels like. Right. So there's there's a lot. You can look at a person and see that they're depressed, just like you can look at a person and see they have a runny nose. And people don't, people don't think that you mm. can, but mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> I wish I had a <laughs> mm button. What'd you say? I wish I had a mm button. I only got this. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, right. Uh, is there, how does Mind You Wellness contribute to destigmatizing mental health and raising awareness about its link to physical health? So I, I, I talked to my parents, just to, not my parents, sort of mercy. I don't know why I said that. I wanted to say patients. I talked to my patients the way that I'm talking to you. I'm extremely, extremely, extremely honest. You are not going to sit there in my presence and tell me that you sleep all day, that you don't want to go to work, that everybody at work is mean to you, and that you're not depressed, that you just need some FMLA because I'm going to tell you that you are depressed and why you're depressed. And then I'm going to tell you how I can help you. What is not, not only how I can help you, how, how you can help yourself and how others can help you as well. What, what you would need to do. You know what I mean? Right. So that, 
just being honest with people. I don't, I don't just go along and just encourage people to not have a look at what's really, really going on. And that's how I, and by destigmatizing it, I, like I said earlier, I, I really, you just have to ask people because the stigma comes from people being concerned about what other people think. Right. So the only thing that I can do to destigmatize it is not be judgmental myself when I'm treating people. So I, so I treat anybody, you know what I mean? Like, and I don't use, um, like religion and things like that to to treat people because it's a physical thing and i don't really need religion to do it Mm -hmm. um and so i just destigmatize by just being very very open-minded and also honest gotcha can you share any success stories from mind you wellness um as far as as far as destigmatizing not not as far as destigmatizing because I wouldn't know how to make that into a story really. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, but I just know that, yes, I've helped people to, to do all kinds of things. Like just to, a lot of times I help kids because failure to launch is my, my main thing. Right. Like, so it's a lot of time kids are going to school or they won't go to school and they're anxious so they're not going to graduate or something like that. So I'll help them to to either go back to school or to do school from home, whatever works out best for them so they can still get their education. And I get to talk with these kids a lot about how, why it's important, why they need these things, you know, so they can support themselves. A lot of kids are, are in a situation where the home life is a little dysfunctional and they don't want to be there. How I just transfer them out. <laughs> how do you deal with it when they like arg- argue with you the patients yeah or do they sometimes uh, well we dis we disagree sometimes um i wouldn't i wouldn't call it an argument i a lot of the times i will do what the patient requests a lot of the times right and so the argument will be me explaining why I wouldn't maybe choose that as a first choice or sometimes they don't agree with the the diagnosis. Um, but, but, but it's not a very long argument. Basically, if they don't agree, they can get a second opinion. You know, how do you, I'm okay with that. how do you kind of ensure that the clients feel comfortable and safe during their sessions? Well, I talk, I, you know, I talk directly to them. Um, I, I definitely tell them to take their time they don't, they don't have to tell me anything that they don't want to tell me. Right. Um, so sometimes I'll just ask them to tell me like vaguely what, what, what is going on. So that basically just listening a lot and, um, helping them, helping them to express things that they're thinking and also validating some of the things that they, that they, they've known and understood but they haven't got that validation, um, you know, outside where people are benefiting from, How you know? Yeah. Yeah. How are you uh, measuring their progress? Like, is there like a, a graduation when you're like, all right, this person, he's right, straight. right, right, right. So absolutely. For some people, um, some people have on lifelong disorders, like schizophrenia or something, you know, that's lifelong right. or even dementia, but, um, but some people have just a depression or something. And so they have goals actually. So, you you know, every, every time I see them, that's, that's the therapeutic part. Um, Mm -hmm. It's not just medicine. So, so they'll come to me and they'll say, you know, these are the symptoms that I'm having, whatever they are. I can't sleep. um, I can't keep a job or I don't have a job or I'm about to get fired, whatever it is. Right. And so we start working from there. Right. So first, maybe we'll get them to have a good night's sleep every night and then, you know, we'll go from there. And then eventually somebody might get a new job. This this happens a lot. A lot of the time it's get a new job. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but I help them do that, that situation. Right. Um, so so it can be get a new job. It can be so I've helped people get get pregnant. Some people want to get pregnant. That's that can be a whole mental health thing, because if you can. I felt like there should be an air horn right there. (laughs) (laughs) 
it felt, appro- it felt appropriate. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. So yeah, there's been a few women that um because that that's a, a whole nother huge huge topic. Okay, so I've met women who. Okay, so if you're depressed and your relationship is not going well, maybe because you're depressed or whatever. So I've met women who have treated their depression and then they have been able to move into the next stage, which is trying to have the baby. But first you have to be not depressed so you can actually want to be intimate with your partner, I guess. Right, right. And think about planning On a both family. Both sides, isn't it? Yeah. And, and so you cannot be anxious by it and stuff like that. And so then, but then, so then you have to go through the whole stigma, all of, all of, all of that because you can weigh the risk of having like postpartum depression with somebody who, and even psychosis I've dealt with people. If you do have schizophrenia or, or bipolar, you can, you can become psychotic if you get pregnant, mm. you know? Yeah. So, um, destigmatization is very, very important because if you don't treat these disorders, you know what I mean? Right. Some, right. Some postpartum depression. Some people have, um, you know, it hasn't ended very well. Man, my, my next question was, um, what's the most rewarding part of running Mind You Wellness? But if you have a uh, little baby Daniel crawling around because right. Sarah, Sarah went to Mind You Wellness, how can it not be that? <laughs> right, right. That that part is extremely rewarding uh, because literally I see babies, but babies be not, not no, their mom was not pregnant, then they are pregnant. And yes, I help them keep their mood. I've helped moms graduate while they are um, pregnant, mm. right? And they and they have ADHD, so I treat them because other people have not treated them because mm, you know what? To be honest, sometimes it has been male male clinicians have not treated them because they said they they want to protect their self, you know, and not, you know they don't want to treat the pregnant lady because they don't want to harm the baby. But you, if you do some research, you know, then you can know that you can help the mom you know so her life doesn't have to fall to pieces yeah and she can still have her baby right and it's much better for everybody in the family mm. makes sense mm. makes sense what are some of the challenges you faced in running mind you wellness and how have you overcome them um some of the challenges well um be having in person in person um appointments is a bit of a challenge because of many reasons, you know, um, whether it's financial safety, all that kind of thing. Um, but I've networked, um, and met people and, uh, built relationships where I am able to see people in person now. So that's actually a progression of my business. That's, that's new. So in the- like talk more about that. How can like someone who was in your position, maybe a couple years ago who needed that, like, how can they find it? Like, where would they look for it? So a couple of years ago, I was in school and I was working in the hospital. And that's that's when that's when the networking began. You have to position yourself in the place that leads to where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I am an introvert, I'd say. So I was not. I, I didn't network and do things like that because I don't like kikiing with people. Um, but I, I did um, one. One of my degrees is in leadership. It's in healthcare leadership, and a lot of that degree, like uh, you have to learn how to Kiki. relationships and why they're important. Okay, and so um, I would I would say to people that they need to be purposeful and honest in their interactions with people. Right. And that's how I've been able to move forward all the time with my business. Cause you need, you need collaborators uh-huh. for one thing or another. Hmm. And what happens if you don't have them? If you do not, if you do not collaborate, you can only go so far. Hmm. That's uh, a lot of me. I, I ask cause I already know, but some people need mm-hmm. to hear, hear that because, um, mm-hmm. I, I come from a place of trying to do everything by myself and mm. I just know in order for, you know, just what you said, I just kind of wanted you to say that. So people would hear that. Right. Just, you need a team. <laughs> right. Right. I love to do, I would, it's, it feels more comfortable a lot of times to do things by yourself, but, but um, yes, you need, you need a, uh, sometimes more, more than one person because different people bring different things to the table, you know? Right. 
How do you stay up to date uh, with like the latest research and developments in mental health treatment? Right. There's a lot of um, continuing education credits is what we call them. And, and we have to do it in order to keep our license up. So you just read articles about, excuse me, research studies. So that tells you what to, you know, what what is working right now and what people are investigating about what works right now. Are there certain like websites to go to or? Oh, okay. Well, I use the Carla uh, Psychiatry Report. Um, and I use, um, you, re really there is, it's not websites. It's more like articles. So is it something like I could get my hands on or like the common person could get their hands on or like, is it like only for, yeah, I wouldn't say that it's common and you, I don't think, I don't think the common people would under I, I don't think people who were not educated in it would know, would understand. It's it's compli it's it can be complicated. Is there any book you can recommend for like the general person who kind of wants to learn about mental health? Like mm. that like if I if I wanted to learn about it and you know I'm not Oh. Well I'm not calling myself I mean, the brightest crayon crayon in the box. There's so many different, but there's so understand. many different books. I, you know, I don't really have any recommendations, but there's uh, CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. That's a common therapy uh, that there's a lot of books on uh -huh. that that type of therapy could help a lot of people. It's about the way that your thoughts inform um, your, your emotions and your behaviors. Right. Gotcha. So that that's a good place to start because they have workbooks too. So you can, you can read about it, but you can also work through the, the work, you know, that's something that you could do on your own to help process your thoughts. Yeah. That's a great insight. Definitely have to write that down. What, mm -hmm. what are uh, some common misconceptions about mental health that you encounter in your work? People, a lot of people think that they will, if they, if they take a medicine for mental health, that they'll get addicted to it. And that is just not true. Um, and I think that stops a lot of people from, from trying medicine. So it's, they need to look at it more like if they got, um, they got a headache, they would take some Tylenol and they would not be addicted to the Tylenol. They would just get rid of the headache. Right. Um, so mental health can be like that. Like you, you asked me a, a few questions that kind of, I think you want to understand, because a lot of my patients want to understand this too, how if they come to me, how they can not get trapped into taking medicine and having a diagnosis for the rest of their life. Yo, you right? hit it on the head because I know I'm personally jumpy about that. Like I'm a brother who right. won't even take Tylenol. Right, right, right. So it's not it's not like that. Like if if you have a disorder that is a lifelong thing, like yeah, ADHD is a lifelong thing. And some of those people don't even some people who have ADHD do not medicate themselves all the time either and still function. But say if it's something like depression, it's just it's like if you had if there was too much pollen outside and you have allergies, right? So while the pollen is there, you have to take um medicine for your allergies and so there can be something going on in your life it could be anything it could be grief it could be a financial stress it could be raising teenagers it could be that you love your job but your job makes you work 80 hours a week and you're not sleeping enough okay and so you might just need a medicine all right so let me put it the way i'm, I'm formulating this in my brain right now I'm, I'm using my own personal experience so i had this shoulder pain and I had this pain for like three years, no life. Like, mm -hmm. and it just one day my shoulder just started hurting out of nowhere. So after like two and a half years, I was like, I'm going to go to the doctor. And when I got to the doctor, the doctor told me that I probably had inflammation in my shoulder and they prescribed me, you know, a, 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 I guess a drug from the local Walmart and I got mm -hmm. it and my shoulder started feeling better. So mm -hmm. in that, what it taught me and how to relate it to what you're saying is that even though I didn't want to take no type of whatever, there are drugs that can help. So yeah. if I have had, so there are three parts to us, the way I see it, physical, mental, and um, emotional, spiritual, whatever. So if I have a physical problem, I can also have a mental problem. So if I would have had 
mental inflammation that I just didn't diagnose for three years. I just would always have it just like I just always had my shoulder pain. So, and you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. And if people can understand it cause they, they don't understand it. And the thing is, let's look at it both ways. again. Let's look at your shoulder. Let's look at your shoulder that you let hurt for two years, sir. Okay. How many things did you not lift? How many balls did you not throw? You know, cause your shoulder was hurting. How many times did you have to sleep on the left side instead of the right side? Because your shoulder was hurting. Your sleep was two years, right? Same thing now, if you let your mind be in that state for two, three years, how many jobs do you not get? How many friendships do you ruin? How, how overweight are you going to get? Um, you know, right. it can go on and on when you could just like clean it up real quick. Right. Right. Cause, um, now I can actually throw darts with my left hand mm -hmm. and that was through, you know, work. Right. So if you have make the mental work, I suppose you could metaphorically start throwing darts with your mind. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so true though. And it will get, so it, and it can either get worse or it can get better, you right. know? Right. So um, if you, if you're, go ahead. No, no well, I was just going to say, what advice would do you have for someone who is struggling with their mental health, but is hesitant to seek help? Like, how do they jump? I always, I, if they can, if they can, because, you know, it's not that easy to go get mental health help. So if they can, I definitely suggest that they just go and talk to somebody, whether it's a therapist. You can start with a therapist. A therapist, what are they going to do to you other than reveal the truth to you? And they're not going to tell you the truth. You have to tell it to them. So how, you know what I'm saying? Like, you should go. Just, you have to, you have to take the first step. That's all I can say. Because right. it's not going to get better by itself. Just like a, a physical thing. If you have mental, like, like anxiety or something like that, it's, it's really not going to get better by itself. Right. You don't have to go to like a psychiatrist, but, um, but it doesn't hurt to go. It, what I'm just it's thinking easy. about, sorry, go ahead. It's easy for me to say it doesn't hurt to go because I have more of an understanding. And actually, it, it, it could hurt to go because sometimes when I see some things that other people prescribe, I I wouldn't prescribe that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I'm trying to do my part. So it's because I know and I would say, no, I don't want to take that because of this or that, you know, if it was me. So that's why I can say, oh, it's not dangerous. Go. But yes, people, it is. It can, it can be dangerous. I totally understand where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. So, so what they could do, right, uh -huh. is they can go and hear what what the person has to say about whatever they tell them, you know, and see what they have to offer as far as how they can help them, and then they have to decide from there if they want to do those things. You can you can go to the first meeting and you can look up what what they say. You know, they might tell you to do a certain kind of therapy. They might tell you to take a supplement or something. You can look it up, right? And see if you want to try it. And then if you if you want to try it, you can just do it in small doses. You know? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, actually. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, I have some other questions before I get into uh, those. Some like questions that don't have to do with mental health. Some quick questions. Okay. Um. Before I I go there. What message would you like to leave our listeners with today about mental health, its impact on physical health, and the importance of managing it? Just that don't don't let things fester. They'll get worse. Um, it does take courage to go and have a look at your mental health. Uh, and there are a lot of people out there that want to help and have a lot of good information. And so if you're struggling, I do urge you to just at least go and get an evaluation, whether it be by a therapist or by some kind of psychologist or mental health person so that you can just see if what your options are, because it might not fix itself. 
And if you don't, you can just take a look at your life and see if there's areas where you feel stuck, like you like you can't move forward, you can't organize, or, you, or you're overweight and you can't get to the next step, then it might be your mental health that's holding you back. It might not be the people around you and it might not be um, the situation. It really might be the way that you're looking at the situation. And if it's that, then that's your mental health, whether you want to label it or not. Boom. There it is. I love it. All right, all right, all right. So the people want to know, what are you listening to right now? <laughs> what? Music-wise? Music-wise. Oh, my goodness. I don't listen to that much music. Tell it like <laughs> it is. Tell, 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 there's someone out there listening who's like, yeah, me neither. So so why? Like, what's going no, on? No, because if I say what I'm listening to, people are going to just laugh at me. Oh, come on. You need to say it because there's definitely someone who's going to laugh and we need that. But there's definitely someone who's going to be like, she's spitting right now. No, no, I'm not spitting. <laughs> when I get in my car, right, <laughs> I'm listening to Bridgerton, the book, literally. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? My my daughter might think you're spitting. She be watching. You think so? She watched Bridget. That's that Netflix show, right? Yeah. It's a blood club. Yeah, I'm not. I'm different. <laughs> that was left field. That was left field. But you know uh -huh. what? I hope I have some listeners. I, I'm pretty sure I will. Just gonna be like, yeah, I didn't know they have Bridgerton <laughs> on audio. You know, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you watching right now? What like documentaries, um, I, I, TV I just shows, finished series? watching Your Honor on Netflix, and then I watched um, Eric on Netflix. I'm um, not sure what I'm going to watch next. Um, I need something. What should I watch? Your Honor was very good. Your Honor was a madness with uh, my mm -hmm. boy from uh, Breaking Bad. What's his name mm -hmm. again? Right, right. What's my man's name? I don't even know his name, but... But, um, yeah. Um, Walt, Walter. Forget his real name. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Malcolm, well, <laughs> Malcolm in the Middle. Um, I'm watching... Uh, Apple TV, same as you. You can go. You should be able to go straight there. Um, I'm watching Dark Matter, and I'm watching Presumed mm. Presumed Innocence with Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, okay. Um, put them up. What What are you reading right now? Well, that's what I'm saying. I listen to my books. <laughs> Bridgerton. I, I read some weird stuff sometimes. That the last, yeah, it's it's gonna be very left field all the time. No, what. What are you eating right now? What's the food of the moment? Mm, the what? food of the moment. If oh you my could, goodness. if you could pick Seed one food, wait, 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 wait. If you could pick one food from 2024 that smashed it for six months straight now. Sea bass. I've been eating sea bass every single day, and my man, my man, cooks it. I got a personal chef at my house. Mm. And the way this food is never an issue, but sea bass, I've been having it every day. So why? What like what's the difference between sea bass and the salmon and the you know? Oh, cod, I like cod salmon too, but sea bass is sea bass is Snap light and um too, just delicious. It has the right amount of oil and mo moisture and it's just light and it's just too delicious. It's like butter, a fish that's like butter. Hmm. Well, I went to Brooklyn the other day. Sean cooked me some fish and um Oh, yeah? It must have been sea bass because the way you described it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You're uh, funny. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Watching, reading. You got a drink of 2024? Yes, I do. What is it? Make her sour, but you got to do it with the egg yolk froth on the top. See and a then? nice dark cherry or else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like I should do that for some reason. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I think besides that, I have this thing I have to do where I say a word and you just say the first word that comes to mind. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Black. <laughs> Me. Oliver. Oliver. What did you say? Oliver. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> was he on Smile Orange? So I want to say, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Oliver at large. Um, <laughs> Fifty Cent. <laughs> You heard me crazy. Oh no, I didn't hear you. Fifty Cent is crazy. Captain America. <laughs> um. You said you said a word, and I got a visual, obviously, and it it wasn't a captain to me. Well, uh, we want to know. He said, "What? It was it was the, re- the regular Captain America." Oh, oh. And it didn't give me a word for me. Mom. <laughs> well, I smile. See, a lot of times with me, it's a behavior. You said, "Mom," and oh, I oh. smiled. And I just... Oh, you got to say that because I'm not even looking at your your face. Right, right, right. Yeah, she just. I just smiled like I don't everything positive I guess positive would be the word then all right last one universe Hmm. available Mm, I like that I like that a lot well this has been another episode of the Cy Martial Law Show with Sakina, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a very enlightening, interesting, intriguing interview. Thank you very, 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 very much. Thank you for having me. Is, it, is there anything else you wanted to tell the people about Mind You Wellness, where they can find you, anything like that? Um, you can you can go to www.mindyouwellness.com and then you can find a link where you can book an appointment. I can I can talk and with anybody and so consult, talk, evaluate in North Carolina. Uh, that's the only state that I'm licensed in. But I, I'd I'd love to answer questions for anybody who has any questions. Like I said, it, if you want a no pressure situation where you just want to ask a lot a lot of questions about mental health medications, things that people have tried to tell you you, you have before or they tried to prescribe you before, that's what I, I love to do is help people understand what's going on. On and then I, I don't need you to take anything from me so you can that's the last thing you can find me there and i can help you understand well there it is my people sakina we appreciate you my name is sam marshall law this has been another episode of the sam marshall law show until next time peace love and positive energy and we out like that peace